I use five and a half thousand liters of water a day. Now, liters are hard to wrap your head around intuitively, so let's try that in another form. Five and a half thousand liters is roughly the equivalent of 900 toilet flushes, 30 bathtubs worth, or half a minivan. Now, you might wonder how I possibly managed to use that amount of water in a day, so let me break it down for you. Around the house, showering, brushing my teeth, doing the laundry, washing the dishes, I use about 30 toilet flushes worth of water a day. A larger chunk goes towards producing the things that I buy and use, anything from electronics to clothing and everything in between. That's about 200 flushes worth of water a day. Finally, the largest chunk by a long shot, 700 flushes worth of water a day, goes towards making the things that I eat. Now, I'd love to tell you that I'm just some weird anomaly, but in reality, the average Canadian uses almost 1,000 liters of water a day more than I do. This is a mix of their direct water use, inside the house, outside the house, and their indirect water use, the water that goes into making the things they buy and eat and use. Together, we call this the water footprint. And just like we can calculate your water footprint, we can calculate a water footprint for anything under the sun, from your brand new phone case to your upcoming holiday. I'm going to focus on food for a lot of this talk, and that's because food for most of us is by far the largest component of our water footprint. So let's try a hamburger as an example. Picture this. Every ingredient in a typical hamburger has to be grown, processed, shipped, and prepared. So you've got the wheat in the bun, you've got the vegetables, you've got the condiments, and then some of those ingredients, like beef, need to be fed in their own right, requiring another whole layer of ingredients and another whole layer of water footprints. So when you add that up for a typical burger, that becomes 2,500-ish liters of water, which is about half of the total water that I use per day. For those of you who are vegetarian, a veggie burger, for example, based on soy, is a much better alternative. It uses less than 10 times the water than a hamburger does. Although, there are other culprits as well in a vegetarian diet. So almonds, for example, are very high in terms of their water intensity. A single almond takes the equivalent of two toilet flushes worth of water to produce. And walnuts and pistachios and other nuts aren't all that much better. So let's try this out with you guys as a bit of an experiment to see where our water knowledge is at. Coffee or tea, which one takes more water to produce? Raise your hands if you think coffee. Raise your hands if you think tea. So coffee takes the cake here. Coffee is 10 times more water intensive than tea, although the exact numbers will be affected by where you buy your coffee from, exactly how it's roasted, and what you add to your coffee or tea, milk or sugar. One more. Beer or wine? Beer, raise your hands, more water intensive. Wine? All right. Wine is slightly more water intensive than beer, just about one and a half times, although if you think about how much wine versus how much beer you might drink in a single sitting, <laughs> that might start to change the balance a little bit as well. So for most of us, the single ingredient that is going to be the most water intensive is beef by a long shot. Although other meats, nuts, and sadly chocolate as well are also high on that list. So for me, I've worked on water issues for a while, and I've been interested in water issues for a while. But it wasn't until recently that I sat down to calculate my water footprint. I used a water calculator one that you can find through a quick online search, and it took about five minutes. It asked me questions about my indoor and outdoor water use, as well as my eating and buying habits. I would consider myself a fairly water-conscious person. I try not to let the tap run longer than it needs to, I try not to wash the car more often than I have to, and I wouldn't run a dishwasher load if it's half empty. But I was shocked to find out that fully three quarters of my water impact came from one thing, eating meat. Over the course of my lifetime, not letting the tap run would save a lot of water. 
but a small change to my diet, like cutting down from eating meat once a day to eating meat once every two days, could cut my water footprint almost in half. So, okay, I get it. You know, food and other things that we buy and we use can be fairly water intensive, but we live in a reasonably wet part of a reasonably water-rich country, Canada. Why is it worth saving water at all? Why does it matter? I'll give you two reasons. The first is the fact that for any of you who have lived on Canada's west coast for any length of time, you'll know that our relationship with water is already starting to change. It's hard to turn on the news in the summer and not hear about a drought somewhere in the province, and more often than not, in many places in the province at the same time. Likewise, we see things like forest fires, which impact water quality, which can make water unusable. All of these are local manifestations of climate change, which might be a very global environmental issue, but has very local, real implications for our relationship with water. The second factor is the fact that we're not isolated. So if you think about the things that you use, that you buy, that you eat, many of them don't come from Canada. You might buy avocados, for instance, which are imported from Mexico, where water scarcity is a very real issue. Or you might buy your jeans from Bangladesh, and water quality is a major problem in rural communities there. As we become increasingly globally interconnected, we not only have to track how products move back and forth around the world, but also the water that it takes to produce those products and how that is transferred along with them. So, water conservation. It's important, but what can all of us do? We tend to look at environmental issues like climate change and think, this is really big. This is a lot bigger than me. And that disempowers us from taking action. But the great part of water issues, and water footprints in particular, is that for many of us, we're already doing the things that we need to do to cut down our water footprint. We're just applying it to something else. You've probably heard reduce, reuse, recycle before, right? With respect to your waste, with respect to the garbage you produce. But it's really that same skill set that you need to look at for your water footprint. So you hold up an item of garbage and you wonder, first of all, is this recyclable? Second of all, can I compost it? And third of all, in a bigger picture, can I just cut down the amount that I'm throwing out? With water, it's very similar. Using a tool like an online calculator, you figure out where, which of your habits are the most impactful. And then you start to tweak things. Can I cut down food waste, for example? Because food takes a lot of water to produce, and every time I waste food, I waste the associated water. Or can I tweak my diet slightly in such a way that Beef, for example, being more water intensive is something that I eat a little bit less often. For me, it all started with a water calculator, one that made me aware of the numbers that I never knew about my own life. And in the process of just doing the research for this talk, I've managed to cut my own water footprint almost in half. It took a little bit of tweaking to my diet. It took a little bit of consciousness around where I use water and what my worst habits are. And in reality, it just took a little bit of reading and learning about my impacts on the water cycle. I tend to get excited about numbers, and I don't expect all of you to, but we can all get excited about saving water. Thanks. <laughs>